everybody, and welcome to The Wow. Well. Welcome. Episode four. Amazing. So we exciting. We have a good topic coming up called A Supernatural Atmosphere. Wow. It's a good one. I'm excited for Very that. Very good one. And in case you didn't notice, I'm trying to grow a beard like Josh Ham. I'm trying to, but it's not working. <laughs> it's not. This, you've tried your whole life and you still haven't grown a beard. I've tried for seven days and I've got this. How long have you tried? More than seven days. Seven years? Mm. Maybe. Six years? Yeah, I reckon some of that. Legit. How often, how often do you have to trim that beast? Uh, probably twice as much as I need to trim this, to be honest. Put right down in the comments, should Josh Ham shave his beard? Yes or no? If, if we get more than... 90%. 300 <laughs> comments saying you should shave your beard. Do you reckon you would? Probably not. It depends who the comments are. If it's my mum, maybe. Mm, I'm going so to get Mum, don't comment. I'm going to get onto your mum and get her to do it then. Uh, but what we should talk about where things are at here in Melbourne right Let's now. Let's do it. Because mm. we're on the COVID journey. Yeah. Which we, this is the first day out of lockdown for us when we're filming this. Uh, we've, we've had a two week lockdown, which has been challenging. And um, we had to, <laughs> well, if you've been keeping up with the well episodes, the first week of lock, Sunday of lockdown, we were able to film just before the lockdown. So we mm-hmm. used that praise and worship for that. But then last Sunday, we li- literally did what we talked about last week, five people in mm-hmm. the auditorium, five people in another part of the building, hosts upstairs. And it was challenging, but it was, it was still a powerful Sunday. Yeah. And we just really have faith and believe that people still have a great encounter with God at home and they still praise, they get up off that couch and they praise God. Yes, it was awesome. What was great too was you mentioned about that song that um, really the circumstances um, were perfect to do Andy's song, which we postponed because we were going to do the Holy Spirit song because of the day of Pentecost, yada, yada, yada. And the whole thing about timing and hearing God and Mm. having the new song of the Lord, we sang that song and it was perfect. Because it was Psalm 23, which, you know, which is great. In the valley I praise Him, on the mountain I praise Him. And people needed Mm -hmm. to declare that this last I will not fear, I will not fear, for you are with me. Mm. Yeah, totally. It was oh, totally, man. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but this awesome. Sunday, we've so restrictions are starting to eat, so we can have fifty people Ooh. in the auditorium. We're gonna have fifty people in another part of the building, yes. um, and we're gonna do eight services, which is pretty crazy. Two Saturday night, and we're doing six on Sunday. Yeah. So we normally only do four on Sunday, which is a lot in itself. So doing six on Sunday. I know, because so. we are passionate about mm-hmm. being the church. That's right. And the church is people coming together and worshipping the Lord together. So we are going to go to the effort, guys, aren't yep. we? We are. We are going to put in so that people can celebrate together and worship And together. I just want to say, on this in this forum, we just want to honour Pastor Russell and Sam for being such amazing leaders because they have pushed to get people back into church mm. because of the power of the gathering in the body of Christ. You know, there's a lot yeah. of pastors and churches out there that still haven't gotten back together as a church to yeah. meet. Yeah, because of on, fear guys. or whatever else. But um, we're just yeah. so blessed to be part of Planet Shakers Church who, uh, you know, we, any opportunity we get, we're yeah. meeting back together because yeah. there's such power in it. Oh, it's so and different having people in the building. Isn't As it? opposed to like last so Sunday, different. we had um, a Zoom call with people on the screen behind yeah. the preacher, which was good, but it's yeah. nothing like being, meeting in person. I know, like it, so. because it's what the Bible says, right, guys? Mm. Right. And so um, we want to encourage you to get your passion back for meeting together yep. in the church yep. because it's this wonderful vehicle in which God can touch you, empower you, strengthen you, heal you, give you everything you need throughout your week. And so come on, guys, church is amazing. Mm-hmm. So we want to talk to you today about a supernatural atmosphere. This mm-hmm. is what happens where two or three are gathered together in His name, talking about Jesus. There He is in the midst. Now, wherever Jesus is, there is a supernatural atmosphere. Right. And we see it right throughout Scripture that wherever Jesus went, there was the kingdom of God manifested here on earth as it is in heaven. So we saw the blind eyes open, we saw the lame walking, the deaf hearing, the lepers being completely healed from that leprosy. Uh, We saw people even being raised from the dead. Why? Because of this supernatural atmosphere. And so that's what we're always pursuing as well as God's presence, of course, but Mm. pursuing God to release His kingdom here on earth Mm. um, as it is in heaven at Planet Shakers. And so, of course, our praise and our worship is part of that uh, preaching of the Word and the agreement Mm. uh, in the Word. And then altar call. This is something that people forget. 
time at the end of a mes- message to allow the Holy Spirit to move yeah. and for God to speak to people and heal people. Mm. And sometimes I think that's some of our best worship when we are just allowing Holy Spirit to move and we're just flowing with the Spirit. But anyway, let's talk about this supernatural well, atmosphere. The whole thing of atmosphere is is very interesting to me. And, and everyone, like we believe for the supernatural atmosphere, on the flip side, everyone has their own atmosphere, don't they? Like when mm, you can come into contact yes. with people and you're like, wow, this person's got an interesting mm, atmosphere about them. Good one. Uh, but, if, you know, if we study Jesus, because that's who we aim to be like, yes. um, yeah, look through the Scriptures. This, the atmosphere that he just had, whenever he walked, no matter what situation he was walking into, he he carried that supernatural atmosphere. Mm. I love that story in, I think it's Luke 7, 11. I always remember that because of the store, 7, 11. But Luke mm. chapter 7, verse 11, it's where the, the, he's coming one way. He just did amazing miracles somewhere else. So coming over the mountain with a big crowd of people and coming out of the city is is the widow with her her dead son in the coffin. They'd just died, so she had nobody left. And this is actually what I wrote the song, mm. Glorious Collision, out of. Yeah. And it's just an amazing picture of absolute death and mourning coming yes. against absolute celebration and life. Yeah. And there becomes this collision of, of, of this atmosphere versus this supernatural atmosphere. Mm. And God's atmosphere always wins. Always. And and God and Jesus touched that coffin and the boy woke up and yes. it was just an amazing uh, moment. And and that is the atmosphere of God. And we want that atmosphere. It's not like 2,000 years later we are going to just believe for something different. No, we want that yeah. same atmosphere that we read about in the Bible that Jesus carried, that supernatural atmosphere, to be a part of our meetings. Yeah. And that's what praise and worship does that and, 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 and lifting Him up yeah. sees the atmosphere change. Even if we're in the most secular society, Australia is a very secular nation mm. um, and not, yeah. not many people go to church, but we can be in the middle of a secular city and we can change the atmosphere of the city by what happens in our church. Exactly. Mm, absolutely. I think about the Acts 2 when the Holy Spirit fell on all the people and obviously the atmosphere in that mm. upper room changed. But like you're saying, everybody's got their own atmosphere. And when the Holy Spirit came inside every single person, the atmosphere yeah. in them changed as well. So yeah. like you're saying, it's not just Jesus 2,000 years ago doing what He does. No, we have the same access. We have the yes. same power. That's what Acts 1 8 is all about. You'll receive that same power. Mm. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to Jesus and now to us yeah. to change our atmospheres and change the atmospheres with the people around us. Exactly. True. And that's what we're sorry. No, we're we're just... meant to be able to do as leaders is lead people into that atmosphere. So I want to encourage you today, if you're watching and you're part of the leadership team, you're part of a worship leader, whatever, musician, you're on that altar and you are leading people in, I want you to get that faith that this is exactly what you're meant to be Mm. doing with your gift, with that opportunity is lead people, no matter what they're going through, into that supernatural or that glorious collision Mm -hmm. so that their everyday mundane life or whatever they're facing is completely turned around by that supernatural atmosphere and that encounter with God Mm. and they go out changed. That's what the church is all about yeah. bringing that change and changing someone's life for the better. Mm. Yeah, I love this illustration of like a greenhouse. And I've got this great picture, which is right here. <laughs> and as you can see, the greenhouse is so full of life and it's so thriving, but it, it's amongst this desert wasteland. Like there's so much death on the outside, but because of this atmosphere within this greenhouse, there's life and there's growth. And that is what we are able to do here. Like I was saying before about being in a secular environment, secular city, we can have access to that life and growth because of the atmosphere of heaven, the supernatural atmosphere. So what I want to encourage you to do is just believe for that in your church. Go yeah. after that. Don't just have a normal, natural, musical praise and worship time, but go after that supernatural atmosphere that God has for you. Sometimes a song just comes to one person, just downloads, and then other times it seems like God gives little bits to a few different people and then we put that puzzle together and this was one of those. We needed one so that we're declaring the reign of God, but we're also giving people a picture and a vision and desire, I suppose, in their hearts to call out to God for rain. Whenever Pastor Russell has one of these words, like a prophetic word, that it has visuals to it, it's a metaphor of what God is wanting to do, then I think as songwriters we just start thinking about that thing. What does that sound like? What does that look like? How do we present that in order to pull people into it? 
as we were praying for conference, I just got some of these words and particularly that chorus, just a simple chorus of just rain down your glory. I actually came straight down after the prayer meeting, ran down here into the studios and needed to get it down straight away in very rough version. And then on Monday, I was actually at, at the beach. BJ called me and he was on a train and he said, hey, I've got this song. I reckon there's something in this song. And I said, well, I've, I've got this song. And so we did a trade. I sent him uh, what I had and he sent me what he had. And then he messaged me back after a few minutes and said, I think there's something, I think we need to merge these ideas because I think God's given us different parts of the same thing. I remember sitting at my piano in my room and all I could get was um, a few words, but just this vibe. The vibe was pretty cool, which is why I sent you on the train that day. Pastor Andy's um, chorus just seems so fitting for it. And then I sort of took it to you. So you played it to me on the, that piano right there. And immediately as you sung it to me, I thought, yeah, this is gonna work great in a live atmosphere. And I remember you singing the first verse lyrically and I thought the best response to this, everything you've just said is saying, Lord, I'm ready. And then it came to the bridge. And I remember when you were sitting on that piano, uh, cause I was playing acoustic guitar, you were playing piano. And I said, play something that sounds like rain. Remember that? Mm. And you started doing these little tinkly bits, mm. uh, making that piano sound like rain. And that inspired the bridge of like, come and saturate me now, come and pour it out. Um, and then I remember a, a great message that Pastor Sam had spoken that week. Uh, and she was sharing a scripture about craving for the Lord. And I thought that would be such a perfect word to use in this song about craving for the Lord. He always gives us these opportunities to hear from Him, get a download from heaven and sing it to the world and see God move so powerfully and that's exactly what He's done with this song, that every time we sing it, the glory of God is released, people encounter Jesus. So welcome to question and answer segment. Oh, okay. If you have any questions, write them into the well at planetshakers.com or you can write them on one of the Instagram or Facebook posts that you see. Okay. So we have some questions here. The first one is from Tobias Hosong, I think it's called. Hello. Please forgive me if it's wrong. How do you process drums for your albums? What plugins do you use and compress, EQ, etc.? What samples do you use? Planet Shakers and Planet Boom have the best sounding drum tracks oh, in the okay, universe. So let me answer that, John. <laughs> okay, you go. No, I have no idea. <laughs> well, look, we, we pride ourselves on having great drum sounds. Drums, I guess for us, are a big part of the mix. Oh, yeah. They're very energetic. They set the feel, they set the rhythm, the tone of Love the whole them. song. So we put a lot of focus and emphasis on making the drum sound absolutely amazing. We want them to sound punchy, big, mm. fat, but really clear at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can probably hear in every song we ever do, the drums are very clear and present because that's what we love. So technically, what, what sounds do we use? Well, we use a lot of Waves plugins. Maybe I will do a, a video on this one day for you Maybe. and I can show you how to mix the drums from start to finish. Yeah, or I could do that. You yeah. could do that. We can film you doing it. But we, um, we obviously, there's a lot of plugins. Waves plugins are, are a go-to. Slate Digital, amazing plugins. But then we do use Trigger too, which is by Slate Digital as well, um, which is a drum trigger to sample the kick and snare. And so what I'll do is, I won't talk anymore about that. I'll just do a video one day and show you. <laughs> the next one is from David Tan. How do you mix tracks for both vocals and instruments? I mean, I can answer that, but why don't you answer for some for someone different? Mix tracks for both bo vocals and instruments. Yes. And how do we mix the vocals and then how do we mix yeah. the instruments? Yeah, I think so. Because they are different. Well, how, how, how do you mix it all you together? Know? Oh, yeah. that absolutely is a difference. When, like, <laughs> in the studio, when mixing for the album and stuff, um, generally I'll try and mix the vocals so that they sound nice and clean and crisp and um, present. And Because really the vocals are the most important part of a song. Besides the drums. <laughs> <laughs> But then all the other all the other elements need to be able to fit around those two things, yep. the vocals and the drums. So 
I'll always try and get the drums and the vocals nice and clean and then mix in everything else. If I need to cut out yeah. certain frequencies of a synth because it's you know taking oh, away from yeah. the vocal or whatever, that's yeah. how I do yeah. that. Some, and the way I approach mixing is get the drum sounding amazing, get the vocals sounding amazing and get them leveled at the same level and then just filter in everything around that. Um, and, and you find that you end up with a better, bigger sounding mix doing that way as opposed mm. to cranking everything up. Anyways, next question is from Samuel Umida Hi. Uh, from Japan. Hey. Greet them in Japanese. Konnichiwa. Hello. Konnichiwa. Yeah. Yeah, Konnichiwa. Yeah. Uh, he would like to know, do you have any advice for young worship leaders? Pastor Sam, why don't you answer that? My advice would be to do it great. No, um, my advice for young worship leaders is to be confident and just go for it. I think when you're first starting out worship leading, there can be all sorts of uh, struggles with doubts and insecurities and wondering if you're doing this right. Um, don't worry, just do it. Yeah. Have mm. an absolute blast. Yeah. But then also be open to someone to help you, correct you, um, instruct you. Like I remember back in the day with Joth when I would lead with Joth and obviously Joth is a lot younger than me and he was starting out and we would travel in America and people wouldn't understand what he would be saying <laughs> because Joth actually speaks so fast. And I'm Australian, mate. Yeah, he, he's actually slowed down his speech, whether you realise it or not. not. I've slowed down about, uh, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> and so sometimes he would just announce something and everyone would stare at him like, what did that guy just say? Um, so he had me in his live to say, hey, why don't you smile? Why don't you um, slow down what you're saying? Why don't you use the Bible in what you're encouraging people? And so, you know, to open up to someone who can help you. Um, but then what I loved about Joth too was he just went for it and mm. just gave it a go. And I think that's the best advice I can give you as a young worship leader. You know, for it. You know, it's funny. When I try to speak the same speed as other people, <laughs> I, I feel like I am going so slow. Oh, praise God. All right, next question. <laughs> next question is from Ivan Peter. I've noticed that you... At Planet Shakers, you sometimes have three electric guitarists serving on the team together, like at playing on stage. I know. Uh, would would so love to know how you guys plan neat. out and separate your guitar parts for praise and worship. So basically what we do... We mute them. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. We, we, typically we have two guitarists on stage, electric, electric guitarists. Electric guitar one in our culture plays the chords, the rhythm. Electric guitar two plays all the lead. Um, if we have three electric guitars, electric guitar one and two will play the exact same rhythm parts. So then the, the sound guy can pan them out and it sounds extra big. That's what I always do on the studio when I'm recording guitars, a left take and a right take. So that can happen live. And then guitar three in that case would be the lead player and play the lines. So that's how that works. Makes sense to me. We've got one more question for today. Zach Ray wants to know, what Zach was Ray. your favourite music style growing up? Pass to <gasps> you first. I don't know. Come back to me. Okay, hear me first. Oh. Growing up, I think every year of my childhood, there was a different yes. favourite. Went Absolutely. through my emo scene, went through my dubstep scene, I went through massive just hardcore jazz. Really? And then big classical thing for a little while until I was listening to classical music and crashed my car and I was like, I'm never listening to classical music mm. or driving ever again. <laughs> I would have thought that would have like made you drive better. No, it just yes. made me listen to worship music while I was driving. Oh, okay. And I haven't crashed since. Well. Yes, good well, idea. Put God first, mate. Um, I think... I used to love that like, late '90s Backstreet Boys, that kind of style. But then I went, then I went into like Lincoln Park, like heavy rock kind of vibe. And Lincoln Park at the time, even though they're secular and you know maybe shouldn't listen to, them, but I, <laughs> I used to really love them because they were really heavy rock, but they also had like tracks yeah. elements in it yeah. as well. And, and so melodic. I, and so I did my own album when I was that, and when I was sixteen, and I tried to make it sound like Lincoln Park. Didn't sound that good. Though. Anyways, <laughs> you don't, don't worry about me. Nah. Well, yeah. Jazz. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's all the time we have for questions. But if you have any, have write them into the well at planetshakers.com. I uh, would love to answer them for you. Well, thanks so much for joining us on the well. It's been a pleasure to have you here with us. We'll see you next week. See you then. <laughs>